And joining me now from Rome again is Métis National Council President Cassidy Caron. Welcome and thanks for taking the time uh, to talk to us on such an important day. Um, so you spent the week in Rome and, and I want to know what your reaction to hearing Pope Francis say, I am sorry, and what was the reaction in the room? It was, um, I mean, I'll start off with my reaction. I, I was surprised, really, to be, to be completely honest with you. We, uh, we've been preparing and, and working extremely hard this week at sharing our stories and sharing our messages, sharing our truths as Métis people and bringing our survivors along to share their experiences as Métis residential school survivors. And we, of course, were bringing the message to Pope Francis in order for him to listen and to, and to process and to understand where we're coming from. And of course, we wanted to, to tell him that we were inviting him to Canada to provide an apology to our survivors and, and their families in our communities, on our homelands, on our territories. And so today, we, we, there was a lot of unknowns when we went into the meeting. We didn't know what we would be hearing from Pope Francis. And so when we opened up the booklet of the English translation to follow along, as he shared his words, and we saw the words, I am sorry, it, uh, it was extremely powerful. And, and it was powerful for me because I was sitting beside uh, one of my elders who's been instrumental in bringing me along to meetings with different survivors across our Métis Nation homeland to hear their stories. She herself is a survivor of Métis Residential School. And, and so when I was following along with her and her and I saw the words, I am sorry, she stopped and she started just crying. She was, she was just so struck by those words. And, and, and for that moment, for me to be sitting beside three of our survivors and to see their reactions was extremely powerful. And I just can't help but think to myself that we were able to share our stories with Pope Francis and move him so much so that he felt compelled to apologize that when he comes to our communities, when he comes to Canada and meets with more of our survivors, what more we might actually hear from him. What are you hoping to hear from him? And, and, and then I want to talk to, the, to you about the justice part of this. But what do you expect and hope to hear from him when he is here? So between now and when Pope Francis comes to Canada, there's time for him to continue processing our stories. I know how busy we were this week and how much we have to process and how much reflecting we have to do. And I can only imagine how much processing he has to do after meeting with the Métis National Council delegation, with the ITK delegation and the AFN delegation. That is a lot of stories to listen to, a lot of experiences to hear. And so there's a lot of reflecting that we hope that Pope Francis will do between now and when he comes to Canada so that when he does come and visit, he has a greater understanding, a greater awareness, and, and, and is ready to even further acknowledge the role that the Catholic Church has played in colonization and the harms done to our people, our families, and our communities. And of course, between now and then, there's a lot of work that can be done, a lot of follow-ups from the meetings that we've had this week, we know that actions speak louder than words, and there's, there's just so much that we can be doing um, in preparation for Pope Francis's visit to Canada with the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops. And I, I just really believe that the work is going to begin once we arrive back in Canada. So I want to ask about compensation for Métis survivors of residential schools. I, I'm, I'm wondering if you want to see those documents released, those records released, so that you can, you know, put a name and a face to the people who have done these things. So the, the apology is, is one step. Is justice in your mind another step? And is that what you think you should be going for? Absolutely. So... The message that we delivered from the Métis National Council was a message inviting Pope Francis along a journey of truth, reconciliation, healing, and justice. 
And we've identified a number of actions underneath each of those headings that the Catholic Church, the Pope, the Conference of Catholic Bishops can all contribute to. And justice is a, is a huge piece, especially for the Métis National Council, for the Métis Nation, because most of our survivors, they didn't receive compensation or recon, uh, recognition through the Indian Residential School Settlement Agreement. Those, those residential school survivors who who are, are recognized through that agreement were done so because those schools were federally funded. But a number of the schools that were provincially funded or funded directly through the Catholic Church were the schools that our Métis people went to. So there is a huge piece that we have to do. We still need to be fighting and pushing for the recognition of those schools as residential schools with the same intention that residential schools under the Indian Residential School S Settlement Agreement, they had the same intention. They served the same purposes. So for the Métis Nation, we have a lot of work to do to seek out that, re that uh, recognition, to seek out justice. A large piece of that will be continuing to advocate for the records that are held and, and that were gathered by the churches. We need to know that and we need to advocate for that, that whole body of records. It's not just residential school records. They're church records, community records that tell the stories of our people. And we did make progress on this trip. We met with the, the general superior of the Oblates. And they have access to records that we don't have access to right now. But we have started building that relationship so that we can send our archivists over here to start identifying those stories, to start identifying the gaps in the records, and so that we can start, like you say, putting names to, to our children and, and doing the work that needs to be done to tell our full story. So still a lot. I mean, a great day today, a historic day, but still what I'm hearing is there's a lot, a lot of work to be done but you're on the right path. Uh, Miti National Council President Cassidy Caron, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you so much.